Today, I'll be making with you a ballet-inspired slipper made on the 22 needle Addy Pro. We'll be piecing together two rectangular tubes and I'll be using the materials soft and shiny in cream as well as in rows made by loops and threads. I'll also be using my G crochet hook as well as my handy scissors and a darning needle. I'll also be using 3 8 of an inch satin ribbon. Let's get started. Begin by casting on with waste yarn about four to six rows. In our first row we'll always be weaving back and front so behind the needle and in front of the needle for one full rotation. After our waste yarn, we're going to drop the waste yarn remainder in the center and then begin with the first color of project yarn for our first rectangle. We're going to start with the rose color. So I'm going to take two plies of the rose color loops and thread soft and shiny yarn and, and put it onto the machine. We'll knit 50 rows of rose colored yarn. And 50. Now we're going to cast off using waste yarn. Adding as many rows as you like to stabilize the end of the tube, probably about like six to eight rows of waste yarn. Then we cast off and we have our first piece. We'll repeat this process now creating a white tube, but first we'll cast on with our waste yarn. Now I know that one inch equals about five rows, so I'm going to knit about 35 rows of white. We'll complete our 35 rows, add our waist yarn, and then cast off. We have our second cream tube. Take your two tubes and stretch them out. Make sure all the stitches are even, then get ready to piece them together. Grab your crochet hook. I'm going to use size G for the piecing together. Before seaming together the connections, we need to close off each of the side tubes. So I like to count to the 11th stitch on the seam of the tube, then insert my hook and pull the next stitch into the previous stitch. And then working from side to side until I make my way all the way across and seam together all 23 stitches. Once you've seamed together all of the tube ends, make sure you don't skip any of them and then you can pull off your waist yarn once you've completed all of the stitches. Repeat this on the other side of the tube. Seam both ends of your other tube now. Once you've seamed off the ends for both tubes and all of the stitches are secure, then we can begin our attaching. 
Place your two pieces in a backward L shape where the short tube is perpendicular to the longer tube. In my case, the white tube is the vertical tube, which is the shorter tube. Now take your darning needle, or you could take a crochet hook. With the crochet hook, you'll slip stitch the two pieces together, or you'll whip stitch using the darning needle. In this case, I'm going to slip stitch using my crochet hook. So I'll start with a slip knot and insert my hook into the shorter tube and then insert it into the other tube to connect them. Then I'll pull through the slip knot Now I'll bind the two pieces together by slip stitching from right to left, connecting one column of white knit tube to one stitch of the rose knit tube. Let's take a closer look. Insert your hook into the white stitch, then the V of the rose stitch, yarn over and pull through all three. Once again, insert your hook through the column of the cream stitch, then the rose stitch, yarn over and pull through all three and we are now slip stitching across. Continue this until we reach the end of the seam. Be sure not to accidentally jump to another row on the horizontal tube. On the last stitch, bind off and then weave in your ends. go and cut your ends and when you look at it from the other side it looks beautiful. You can see here that the seam follows the row. At this point we're going to continue seaming and we're going to connect the back of the heel together with these two ends, the front of the toe by folding over the tip and then seaming down the middle of the bottom of the slipper. With the inside facing you, the seaming process will look like this. We'll fold the toe over, then we'll seam the right side of the toe, the left side bottom of the toe, all the way down the bottom, and then finally the back of the heel. As we use the 22 pin machine, there are 11 stitches across the tube. We want those stitches to match with the white tube when we seam it together. So let's count 11 stitches across and then mark our spot on the 12th stitch. With the inside still facing out, fold it, then start at the seam that we just finished and work towards the stitch marker. So insert your hook and start with a slip knot. Just like the previous seam, I'm going to work my way across from right to left. And don't worry, I see that missed stitch there on the third or fourth column and I will grab that while I'm seaming this together. Now we're done one bottom side of the toe, we are going to seam the other bottom side of the toe and it's looking pretty great! 
Now we're going to crochet from where our crochet hook is and seam close the rest of the toe. So folding it, working with the wrong side facing us. Remove your hook and count 11 stitches from right to left. That is where the fold is going to be. Then you're going to count 11 more stitches and mark the 23rd stitch. Now go ahead and create that last fold to form the toe. Insert your hook into the loop we last used and seam together the last toe seam. When you're done your seam, bind off and weave in your ends. At this point when we invert the piece, you should be able to see the toe taking shape. Now we're going to seam along the bottom middle to form the sole of the slipper. So once again, invert the piece so the inside is facing out, match up the two sides that are going to form the sole of the slipper and get ready to seam it together, making sure that each of the vertical pillars of knit match up and don't twist. You can use a stitch marker as well if you want to mark and make sure that your knit doesn't twist. Then insert your hook and begin seaming the sole of your slipper together. Remember, you're always welcome to mattress stitch, whip stitch, or slip stitch your seams shut. Once you reach the end of the seam for your sole, then you can simply turn on the corner and work your way up the back of the heel. Once you've seamed up the back of the heel, then start weaving in all of your ends and make sure that they're secure. Last end. Now we're going to invert the slipper so the right side is facing out. And the last step is to attach our ribbon to the opening of our slipper. 
The amount of how much ribbon you'll need for your slipper will depend on you, your foot, your size, and how big or small bow that you would like. The bow will be in the front, so if you want a big bow, you'll need more ribbon than if you want a little bow. Use a crochet hook to pull the ribbon through the knit from side to side. Or alternatively, you can use a darning needle with an eye big enough to feed the ribbon through. The ribbon is woven in and out of the top edge of the slipper. Both ends ultimately will end up at the front of the slipper so you could tie your bow. Once your ribbon is threaded through, create your bow and then cinch the opening to your desired tension around the opening of the slipper. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, share and subscribe so that you never miss another pattern or helpful advice on my channel. Thanks and have a healthy, safe and happy handmaking life. Bye bye everyone!